Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I did not plan on doing this one, but I am knee deep in garage sale prep and I thought I have some tips that I think could really help people out. So we are going to kind of take you along a little bit of the process of prepping for our garage sale that is this weekend. Today's Tuesday and the sale is on Saturday and hopefully you'll get some ideas for how to have your own sale and be successful and make the most that you possibly can while not going crazy in the process. You look so beautiful. And I'm so lucky to be yours And you're taking me high Ain't nobody like you Okay, so the first thing I do when I am prepping for a garage sale is I try to give myself at least a few weeks before, if not four or five weeks ideally, but at least three weeks before the sale when I start going through things. And this is going to be different for everybody, obviously, if you have a ton of stuff then you're probably gonna want to start sooner if you don't have as much you're gonna you can start a little bit later maybe only a couple weeks if you are someone who has a lot of downtime throughout the day and can have lots of time to be able to go through things then maybe you don't have to start as early I've got three kids so there's not a lot of extra time to be able to do that so I knew I needed to start sooner and have as many weekend days that I could take advantage of as possible and then once I've done that, I just start going through our house. I go through every single corner of the house. Everything gets looked at, closets, bathrooms, drawers, under the beds, um, all of the bedrooms and things in the bedrooms and the homeschool room upstairs, all of that. And a bonus tip for you is if you've given yourself enough time, if this is like a week before your sale and you're kind of scrambling, don't do this. But if you've given yourself enough time, tidy the spaces that you're going through as you're going through them. So what I did is as I pulled things out for the sale, I also threw away garbage or expired medications or clothes that had holes in them or whatever. I kind of threw that away and just kind of tidied up, put things in bins that were already there. I didn't like do a massive declutter, but I just kind of tidied. And it honestly doesn't take too long to do that if you're already in that space anyways. And then it's going to leave yourself feeling a lot more refreshed. It's going to leave your space a little bit more decluttered because you've removed trash and garbage, you've rearranged things, and you've removed sale items. So that is another bonus tip for you. So now I'm gonna take you through a couple of the spaces downstairs that I haven't gone through yet to show you kind of what my process is. And then we'll get into some more tips on pricing and tagging and show you kind of what our setup ended up looking like. The first place I'm gonna look through is up here on top of our coat closet. It's right as you enter in our house. I haven't gone through this in a while and it's mostly bags, honestly. So we have grocery bags like reusable grocery bags. This is just a bag full of reusable grocery bags. Another one, I just need to kind of tidy that up. This, oh, this I can sell. So this, let me get to better lighting. So this is like a baby hammock. You put it on the cart, like shopping carts. So it clips onto shopping carts on both sides and then um, it has the little buckles for them so they can like lay in the cart. But River is past this stage now. So that is gonna go into the yard sale for sure. All right, and then we have more reusable grocery bags. I'm just kind of dropping them all down so I can organize them all again. <laughs> more, what is this? So this is a dot marker, dot to dot book. Oh, I remember because we got two of these on accident. So I put one up there for later. Um, but I'll probably put that in the sale because they haven't even really used the one that I gave them. So that can go in the sale. Let's see, that's another reusable grocery bag. That back there is another reusable grocery bag. And everything over there are bags as well. So let's see what's in here. Okay, so this is my little fanny pack thing, which I love for when I'm going to be like walking a lot. So I'm going to keep that. This is this is a little bag which I haven't used I don't remember the last time I used that so that's gonna go in the sale as well oh this is this is a target bag it's kind of cool like it's a zipper bag that'll actually be really nice for when we're packing to go camping and stuff because we are going for a whole week this time, so we're definitely gonna need more space than what we normally need. So I'm actually gonna hold on to this for camping. And then this, what's this is, oh, this is a like little caddy that attaches 
to a stroller, but we haven't used it. <laughs> I don't think ever. I, maybe I used it once, I don't know. But we are definitely gonna sell this as well. And then I can actually probably sell this bin too because we just got rid of most of the stuff that was in it. So let's just tidy up the reusable grocery bags real quick and then bring this stuff over for the sale. All right, that looks much nicer than before and we've got some stuff added to the pile so let's tackle the next spot. Okay, change of plans. We ended up getting caught up in dinner and just hanging out and so it got a little bit late last night and it is the next day now. Bailey's over here coloring. You wanna say hi? Hi. <laughs> and Quinn is at a swim class right now. Anthony got home from work and took her to swim. Bailey's got some sniffles so we decided to keep her home. But that allows me to get more garage sale stuff done. So now we are gonna start going through all of the cabinets in the kitchen and pulling out things that I can sell. And I know I have a couple things in my mind that are gonna go, but I'm sure I'll find some things that I probably forgot are even under there or didn't expect to wanna let go of. So let's jump in and do that. All right, so this is the kitchen. We've got stuff on top of the fridge, cabinets up there. Um, the cabinet next to the stove and the drawer, the warming drawer under the stove. And then we have these cabinets. Um, that's all food and it's all like my specific food. So I'm definitely not gonna do that. But this one on the end right here, we will go through that one. And then all of these drawers and cabinets here. And then this is our buffet cabinet that I'll go through over here. This cabinet is just for homeschool stuff. So I'm not gonna touch that cause it's just like workbooks, but this for sure. So we're gonna start here and just kind of move our way around. Okay, so down here I'll have our pots and pans, which are all of our new ones that I just put in there. And then this is our Ninja Blender. So I'm definitely holding on to all of that. On this one, we have the girls bento boxes. I featured these in a video recently. So um, it was an Amazon favorites video if you wanna know more about those. But over here, so Rivers cups, we're definitely gonna hold on to. These 360 cups are the best. They're so great. But then when it comes to the bottles, we definitely don't need most of these. Um, so he's almost 13 months old and he got put on this Elecare prescription formula uh, from his GI doctor. If you're curious about like what he's gone through, there are videos about that. He was in the hospital for a week, so he got put on this. But we just had his one year checkup and his pediatrician said he's growing pretty well and doesn't really need it. But there have been a couple times where he just wakes up in the middle of the night and is inconsolable unless he has something. And I nurse him, but sometimes it's not enough. So we are gonna keep, let, I'm gonna say one of each size for him. But the rest of them can go. And then, then back here, these are just accessories for the air fryer. I'm definitely keeping these. This is like a rotating basket that you can put food in and it rotates as it air fries. And then um, rotisserie tools and stuff like that. So that's gonna stay. And then up here, let's go to the top shelf. These are our brand new bowls that we just got. They're um, nesting mixing bowls. I love them. I will link them for you if I remember. I'll try to remember. They have lids as well. So I'm gonna keep those. Back there, there's a couple of the girls um, play kitchen things. So those are gonna stay there. They just really don't have a home anywhere else right now. And then these are our glass storage um, snap top lids with snap top lids. So that's all gonna stay and now this is done. Okay, I'm looking up here and there isn't anything that I need to sell here. I can really see everything. We've got, a, it's, it's messy, it needs to be tidied, but I'm not gonna be doing that in spaces where I'm not pulling items from, so this is gonna wait for another day. But we have a few extra water bottles, cups, all of our medicine and vitamins, and then this is like a first aid shelf. So that's all gonna stay there, and I'm going to tidy that in a future video, probably like a get it all done video if you wanna see that. Moving down to this drawer, we definitely are getting rid of some things in here. These are glass baby food jars I got. I have a baby like food steamer mixer too down here that we're gonna grab. Um, and I'm really sad because I didn't really get to use this. I think I used the baby food mixer twice, two or three times, but River had issues with gagging with food and never really did purees. He, he always just like gagged at them. So we didn't really get to use these. These are basically brand new, but we're gonna sell them as a set and hopefully somebody else will be able to get some use out of them. 
I also keep the user, oh, here's the user manual for the baby food processor, so I'll include that. And then I keep manuals in here. This is for our air fryer. Um, and this is as well. This is for our robot vacuum, which honestly, I'm gonna toss that one. We don't need that. So I'm gonna recycle that one. And a random patch. <laughs> So this kind of is a drawer that wants to be a, dr a junk drawer, but it can't because it has to have dual purposes. <laughs> That's kind of what I view this one as. So um, let's go through this stuff. So he doesn't need the teethers anymore, which they have lids with them. So we'll take that out. A nipple for a bottle, another one of these. Um, this, these are the labels for these baby food jars. These are Ripley's medications more labels I don't know what that's for and then plates and then these are ooh, I was gonna put these on like the cleaners and stuff under the sink so I'll probably do that but this is just garbage this belongs in the baking stuff these are little little cellophane cellophane bags this is our charger for my drone more of Ripley's medication. These belong upstairs. These are thread for my new sewing machine. Tacks, we're always needing tacks. So I just kind of keep a little thing of them there. And then that's my old phone case, which actually can go in the garbage as well. So boom, we've gone through that drawer. Everything is organized and out of there that shouldn't be. And now we have a lot more space. Drawer number one done. Okay, going into the second drawer, the whole family's home and River's awake now. So if you hear noises, that's what that is. But we've got the girls' cereal bowls and these, these are used all the time. So we're definitely keeping those. Rivers plates and the girls' plates. These, Rivers not quite old enough for these, but when he is, they'll be useful. This is another one of those teethers, so we can put that up there. He doesn't really use this Munchkin 360 cup. This was one of the things we had tried when he wasn't drinking out of a bottle, so we don't need that. We definitely don't need this. <laughs> um, this will be a good backup water bottle for the girls. Then we have the straws and lids for these cups, which we use all the time. The girls each have one of these cups as well. Um, this cup back here does get used. And then we have some little Tupperware that we use occasionally as well. And that's it. So that, just a couple things out of that drawer, which is fine. And then I pretty sure that nothing out of these drawers, like these need reorganized, but again, I'm not gonna reorganize any drawers that I'm not pulling stuff from right now, just for time's sake. Um, nothing in there is going, so drawers are done. Okay, now for the utensil drawer. Needs a little bit of tidying, but we use everything in here. I just kind of gave it a once over and the only thing we barely use is the rolling pin, but we do use it at least a few times a year when we're doing like Christmas cookies and stuff like that. So I'm gonna hold on to all of that. So now we're gonna go under here and we have our toaster. What's behind this thing? That's our food scale. I definitely use that. We do not use this, so that can go. And we don't use this. We got a different apple slicer that has, it cuts it into more like thinner slices. So that can go. Um, let's see in here we have, this is an instant pot steamer and then we have our two strainers and this bowl, which honestly, what do you think about this bowl, babe? Because now that we have the metal ones, keep oh, still. Get rid of it. Yeah, so we just got those metal ones I showed you. So I think we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, yes, I am. This, we, don't need Let's get rid of that. I've got my tortilla press for my homemade tortillas. I've got Pyre or Pyrex thing, whatever measuring cup. This is a brand new mixer. Should we keep this one or this one? We don't need two mixers. Can you test it out? Make sure it works, please. Okay, so that one's going in the garbage. We are not keeping that. I wonder if we can keep these attachments though. Okay, so I just put those four things back in here. So the bowls, the toaster, 
the measuring cup and the scale. Over here, we've got plates, bowls, we use all of these all the time. Um, we're using paper plates right now just because we have so much going on this month, so we want to eliminate dishes if we can, but let's see what's behind these things. Okay, so uh, this, I got this for Anthony, but we haven't been able to find a place to hang it that's not like super out in the open. So I'll let him decide on that one. We already have one of these. We don't need two. Uh, we don't need this lid. I got rid of all of our pans when we got the stainless steel ones. And then here we have a bread loaf pan. We have pie pans. And oh, that's a round tupper. Okay. And then these bowls back here, we can actually get rid of. I forgot they were even there. That's how long we've been back there. <laughs> Coming down here, we have a crock pot. Nothing's behind that because it wouldn't fit. Um, our cutting boards, we just have these two, and then we have a couple smaller ones. Our placemats and our instant pot. We have this is like a universal lid that fits on any pan. It has all the different sizes. And I actually use that quite often. So I'm gonna keep that. Oh, this is a mini loaf pan. I'm definitely gonna keep that because I, one of the AIP recipes that I found is a like caramelized onion meatloaf. And I thought it'd be cool to make them into mini meatloafs to have to heat up. And oh, there is something behind. This is. So this bin is full of the girls like play kitchen stuff. We didn't really have anywhere to put it, so it's there for now, um, probably for a while. But back here, there is one more thing. Definitely something we don't need. It's a big pot. We've got another one of those. Oh, I lied. There is something behind the crock pot too. That's where. the baby food maker is. So that, here you go, that's gonna go to. Okay, so now that's everything. So I'm gonna put this back and we've got rid of a lot of the stuff down there. So that's awesome. Okay, going under here, I'm pretty sure everything is good down here. We have two glass um, like casserole dishes or cake pans. We have our donut pan, which I just got for an AIP recipe. This is one of the lids for the glass pans. We have two of these well-seasoned like baking sheets. We have our copper baking sheet. It has like a little pan to go under it that I'm using right now, but, and then our pizza pan, and then our muffin slash cupcake thing. So that's all that's there, and we use all of that. So I'm gonna keep all of that. You trying to help me, buddy? Are you helping mama? Yeah? Hi, can you help me close it? Good job, but oh, watch your fingers. We won't close it anymore, huh? We don't want to pinch your fingers. Ah! Yeah. All right, up here above the microwave, we just keep our batteries, which yes, they're in a wife's case. Um, it works. And then there's nothing up there. I don't know why that's not like installed, but it's just a plug-in for the microwave. So the last place we have in the kitchen is these cabinets up here and then above the fridge, which I need to get a stool for. Okay, so I have my salad spinner up here, which is definitely staying. These two are actually not mine. They're actually someone else's. So I put those aside to get them back to her. These could probably fit in our Tupperware storage drawer. So I think I'm gonna try to do that. And these actually go with a different set that I have that's in the garage. So I will add those to there. These are our produce. We cut and prep our produce like strawberries and blueberries and um, broccoli and all that stuff. So these are the small ones we have. And then these are the large ones. We use those all the time. We just need to. We just went grocery shopping, so we need to prep all of those and put them in here. A mason jar full of bottle caps. 
for the longest time we were keeping these and we were going to do some kind of project, but I think I'm over it. So I think we will get rid of these. A little bit of alcohol there. We'll just tuck that back in the alcohol bin. And then this I've had for a really long time as well. And I love it, so I've been trying to find ways to use it and I just can't. So I'm gonna sell this reluctantly. Okay, this square pan I use when I make brownies. These are our barbecue tongs. And then this bin is just full of alcohol, so that's gonna stay. Now opening up the cupboards. It's just more baking stuff and um, attachments for my KitchenAid mixer. So honestly, I can get rid of these loaf pans. I already have the one that I showed you down there. I don't need these two. And then I have my... Th this is actually like a three-tiered one. My sister has the middle-sized one. But I actually do need that, so we're gonna keep that. These are pie pans that I don't use because I have the uh, ceramic ones down below, so those are gonna go. And then these are my KitchenAid attachments, so I'm gonna keep those. And moving to this one. So this has my mini muffin pan. And the silicone one, honestly, I don't need both. So I'm gonna sell the silicone one because this one's pretty big. This will be fine. And then we have a bunny shaped one. I actually do use this every Easter, but I think I might put this in the like Easter decor bin in the garage so it doesn't take up space in here. Uh, and then these we actually do make little cakes for Halloween as well. So I'm going to put these into the garage into those holiday bins, but I'm going to hold on to those. All right, well that looks significantly better, obviously. Um, we are still gonna put our fruit um, preparation storage bins in there when we don't, when there's nothing in them, but those come down from there and get used so often it's not a big deal. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you with doing that in the rest of the house because this isn't like a cleaning organizing video. This is a garage sale tips video, but I wanted to show you my process in the kitchen at least in a couple areas. So. I basically just do what I just did in the kitchen in every single room, in every single corner, every single cubby, every bin, all of that, and go through everything before we have a yard sale and just pull things I know we can get rid of. So now we're gonna go to the next step, which is laying things out, sorting things to go into the free bin, and pricing things. My best tip for pricing is to price higher than what you're willing to accept, not like crazy unrealistic where you're selling like a $20 pair of shoes that have been worn for a year for $20 as if they were brand new. So you don't wanna obviously go that extreme, but I try to aim it at like 60 to 80% off of retail, depending on what the item is, and then go a little bit higher than that for what I'm willing to accept. So that way there's room for negotiation. If you don't have time to do this or you don't have the energy to do this and you just don't have the desire, you can just have everything be make an offer. And some of the families that are participating in this sale are choosing to do that because you never know you could get offers higher than you would have even priced it for. So either way, I think there's not a wrong way to do it. It's just kind of what works best for you. But I am choosing to price most of the items that we are selling. So let's get into that. All right, Bailey has requested to help me with pricing and it is currently 10, 15 at night. So she's in bed. So I'm gonna be pricing these in the morning. Obviously you'll see it in just a second, but I am going to sort through and at least pull out anything I wanna put in the free bin. So I know, for example, like these syringe thingies can go in the free bin. This little silicone thing I'm gonna put in the free bin. Let's see. There's a random lid for a pot that can go in the free bin. And I'm probably, these pans have some like rust in them. So I'm gonna put those in the free bin as well. So I'm gonna go over here. So that's where I'm putting all of the free stuff right now. And then I'm actually gonna grab this jar too. It doesn't have the full lid, so that can go. 
And then I am going to put this stuff. I'll probably do like, I don't know, like 25 cents for each of these, but I have a bunch of these bottle caps in the garage, like a bag full. So I'll probably just add those to that and put the bottle caps in the free bin and then um, put like 25 cents on each of those jars and go from there. So that is the free stuff. Okay, so step one is complete. That's to go through your entire house. And as I went, I have been tagging things. So that's important too, especially if you're someone who gets overwhelmed with like a big pile of stuff that you have to deal with is do like a couple rooms and then tag it and put it all like in bins and that way you know it's done, it's ready to go out before you start the next room. And then now step three is to start pricing. And that is where Bailey's gonna come in in the morning, so I will see you then. The next tip I have for you is to serve food at your yard sale. Keep it simple, make sure you have someone there to help you by cooking everything, but we're just gonna do hot dogs, individual bags of chips, water, and the girls are gonna have a lemonade stand. So that people who are shopping, especially once it gets closer to lunchtime, have some food and don't get hunger pains and think, oh, I'm gonna go get something to eat now. They can just eat there and you'll make more money. So I'm heading to Costco right now to get all of the supplies for that. All right, I got these stickers off Amazon. They're the ones that have the pre-populated prices on there and there were four blank circles, but I put my name on them because we are having a seven family sale and we are all just putting our names along with the price on each item so that we know like who's who the money goes to for each item. That is my next tip is to recruit some of your friends and family to join the sale with you. It's beneficial for them because they get to get rid of their stuff and don't have to do all the advertising and putting up signs and setting up tables and having it all in their yard. But then it's beneficial to you because it draws a lot more interest to your sale. You can market it as a multifamily sale. If you have more than two to three families, I would actually write the number of families that are joining in on your signs as well as your advertisements that you post on social media. So we are gonna get started here on tagging these. Bailey wanted to help. What do you think we should price this at, Bailey? Um, maybe like a dollar. You think a dollar? Yeah, a dollar. I think a dollar for that. Okay, get a dollar sticker. Okay, what's next? This. These two are set, right? Should we do a set of two or should we set, like price them separate? I think we should price them separate. Yeah, because what if someone only needs one? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should do this for like two dollars each, but there's no two dollars left on this. Oh, uh, there's more sheets. Oh. Two dollars is good. You're good at pricing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm done. This it. was thirty dollars brand new. So let's. Normally it's sixty, it. but it was bought for thirty from Nordstrom Rack. So what should we sell it for? Five. Think five dollars? Yeah, five is good. Okay. Oh, okay, Quinn wanted to join in too. You say hi? Hi! <laughs> okay, what should we price this for? This is a mini muffin um, silicone. Maybe like <laughs> two? You think two? I think one. Let's do a dollar. Because yeah. this is a pretty small one. Mm -hmm. It was like a big one we could do too. Mm -hmm. Let's do a dollar on that one. So next tip is to Whenever you have something that's not, like that there's more to say about it, like if you were gonna give it to one of your friends, you would want to explain that it has this quirk or something wrong with it. Whenever that's the case, always, we, I get these address labels. They're just these like Avery um, 8160 ad return address labels. And then I can write a little description of what like I would say to someone buying that product. That way, if somebody else is selling this for me, say I had to run in and take care of River or something, then the people at least know that it needs a tune-up. All right, what should we price these four ceramic bowls? Seven? I think seven, I think maybe like four, well, not like a dollar each. Yeah, that's what I was gonna Like four dollars. And then I think I'm gonna write a description that says set of four. Now it's the day of the sale and you'll notice that we have tablecloths on most of the tables. We did run out, but there are most of them covered and we have labels as well. So I printed out all of this stuff. This is the girl's lemonade stand and I got that lemonade pitcher off Amazon. So I'll link that, but it has the prices of everything that we are selling. And then you'll see here we have these signs, entertainment and electronics, books, etc. And this just categorized 
all of the things into sections which made it much much easier for customers to shop with so this is my next tip is the more shoppable your sale is the more success you're going to have if things are just randomly put anywhere there's no rhyme or reason to it it's not going to be an enjoyable shopping experience for people stopping by if there's categories and people see oh the baby stuff is over there i definitely want to look over there they're going to be a lot more likely to spend more time there and look and see if there's anything that they need also, if you don't want early birds to stop by your sale, don't put your garage sale signs out more than about 30 minutes beforehand, an hour at the most. So Anthony went and did that about 30 minutes before our sale and just went to the couple places we had mapped out that would be good for signs and put them in the grass there. And then of course, don't forget to go pick them up when your sale is done so people don't stop by the next day. You just saw the free section. We just laid a tarp out and put everything that was being given away for free on that tarp so people could just grab it and go. It was toward the exit of our sale. It also helped bring people in who might have saw like, oh, hey, there's a huge tarp full of free stuff. Let's go check that out at least. And then they would start kind of walking in and looking at all of the other things that we had. So that is another huge draw for people. Also, always put your bigger, more attractive items towards the front. That's another way to draw people in. They might see something that they like and think, oh, okay, let's stop there. It'll be worth our time. And then the last tip I have is to make your clothes easy to see. Folded clothes get super messy. We did end up having to have some folded clothes just for space reasons, but hang as much as you possibly can. Get creative with how you do it. You'll see in a minute here that we used a ladder in between two of our garage shelves to hang more items that we didn't have room for. So definitely do that so that people are more likely to look through them and not just have to like dig through and get tired of looking through a bin. We went to the post office today and we have a package from a subscriber of ours and I'm so excited to see what's inside. I'm so just, I don't even know what's inside yet, but my heart is so full with gratitude for the fact that someone took the time out of their lives to do this for us. So we're gonna open this as a family real quick. Okay. You guys ready to open it? Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I cut off the tape already, so mm -hmm. it'll be easier to get into. Ah, ah, ah. Hold this on, let's show. Super us. cute, hold on. Let's show it. Look that how cute super that is. Cute. <laughs> it's all wrapped. This one says for Bailey and Quinn. So go ahead and open that one. See, here, you open the side. I open the side. <laughs> what? Taco, cat, goat cheese, pizza? I think it's a game. I think a. Yeah, it's a card game. Ah, Whoa. Ah, ah. Hey. Um. <laughs> You race against each oh you race <laughs> he said hey I want that you you race against each other to slap a match between card and spoken word. Cool. That's kind of cool. It's almost like slapjack, but you're not matching jacks. You're gonna be matching the word and the picture, and then you slap cool. it if it matches. That's neat. Yeah. You wanna tell Roxy thank you? Thank you. Thank you. What does this one say? River. For river? river. You want to sit river. up here and open it, River Mia? Excuse me, fan. Ah. <laughs> What's that? Oh. You want to open it? Do you guys want to play that card game tonight? Yeah. Maybe uh -huh. Lily can be in that. There you go. Look, bud. I'll take oh, that. that oh, cute. it's his little brother. <laughs> And it's six to nine months. That's his size right now. That's Heck perfect. Yeah. Look at that. That is so cute. <laughs> you like it? Ah! River, yeah. hey, can you say thank you? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's one more thing in here. Let's see. What does it say? On the it didn't front say anything it. on the front. 
It says two river. <gasps> what? Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's a happy birthday card. <gasps> oh, I didn't show the little brother thing. So, look at how cute that is. Thank you, Roxy. That is so cute. Thank you. And then this is the game, Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. We're going to play it tonight. I'm excited. And then this is his happy birthday card. Ooh, oh, something just flew out of it. Can okay. I go get that, Bailey? <laughs> it says, for handsome little river, happy first birthday, sweetheart. Hope it's a wild and happy day. Wishing you many, many wonderful years with your beautiful family. Love the Conception family. And it says, hi, Jen and Anthony. I just really enjoy you two. I love how you guys parent your big girls and how you share home duties. And I want to give you encouragement to continue to strive. But really, I think you both um, have it all together. Thank you for being brave and to be sharing your lives on YouTube. That takes a lot of courage, Roxy. That is cool. I like that. Thank you, Thank Roxy. You. She has nice handwriting. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Thank you, Roxy. Thank you very much. Much oh, appreciated. Don't, don't peel, are they, do they peel off? No. Yeah. Oh, they They're do. Puppets. They're finger puppets. Yeah. Uh, River. River. I want to play the lion. What, is the, what does the monkey say? <laughs> you do it. Uh, uh, uh. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we found another paper that fell out. It says, to beautiful Bailey and Quinn, well, you know I couldn't leave you two out, so I got a little something for you both. Actually, you can even have fun with mom and dad. It's a little card game that I think you all will enjoy. Continue to be sweet and stay humble and be kind. <laughs> Roxy. Yay. That's awesome. Thank you, Roxy. She wrote you a letter, too. We're going to keep that forever, huh? She got yeah. it for, Mama, she got it from your video. Yeah, she did, because she watches them, huh? Uh-huh. Thank you, Roxy. <laughs> Jump into the car on a